Harris Rosen, and uh, I guess the title is President of Rosen Hotels and Resorts. Been in business for a little over 40 years, have seven hotels and uh, just a cut below 6,500 rooms. Well, born in New York City um, on the Lower East Side of Manhattan, um, a neighborhood commonly referred to back then as Hell's Kitchen. My grandparents um, came from Eastern Europe. My dad's family came from uh, Belarus and Ukraine. And my mom's family came from Austria-Hungary. That's where I grew up, on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. I did not feel or realize that it was a different environment than some other children were growing up in. I thought it was fine. We played most of our games on a, we called it the gutter, the streets, stick ball, punch ball, ring levio, Johnny and a pony, slap ball, box ball. All we, all we needed was a small dean and a street where there weren't too many cars going back and forth. And um, that's where I grew up. Uh, mom, um, mostly mom, because dad was working two or three jobs. Mom would say to my brother and myself, uh, if you guys want a bright future, want to leave the neighborhood one day, education is the key. So they really emphasize education. Somehow, still to this day, I'm not sure how it happened. I was admitted to Cornell University and, and majored in uh, hotel administration. Uh, my brother was uh, admitted to University of Miami pre-med. Uh, he became a, a fine physician, a psychiatrist specializing in, uh, in teenage uh, health uh, mental care. And I uh, went into the Army uh, overseas, spent three years and a few months uh, with Uncle Sam, came out and then started my career. And from where I grew up to where I was, um, even 15 to 20 years ago, was in my mind nothing short of a miracle. And, and it demonstrated to me that America truly was an exceptional uh, nation where people could start from scratch and, and really achieve something if they worked hard, were honest, respected others. And, and so after the third or fourth hotel, I was sitting at my desk uh, planning uh, the fifth, sixth, and seventh. And I said to myself, um, Harris, you've been blessed beyond anything you've ever imagined. It's now time for you to think about others who need a helping hand. And, and that's really how uh, my philanthropy evolved. I, I was sitting quietly by myself, and I, I, I don't want to make this sound mysterious, but I did hear a voice that said, it's time now. What I wanted to do was help those who wanted a good education, but um, were not likely to be able to achieve it for a multitude of reasons. So I called in uh, Sarah Sprinkle, early childhood expert, and I called Bill Spoon in, who was a principal of um, one of the top high schools here in, in Central Florida. And I said, guys, I want to do something that's going to be able to provide educational opportunities for young people, but I just don't want to give a scholarship when they graduate from high school because I think I'm only kind of getting a very small percentage of those who might need a helping hand. So what do I do? Sarah immediately said, you start when they're two years old. Well, I would not heard that before. And she said, we start educating at two, three, four, and then right into kindergarten, right into elementary school, right into middle school, and then high school. And then Bill said, and Harris, if you combine the early education component with a free education, you've got a beautiful package. And I said, free education? He said, yes, free college. So that was it. It probably took less than an hour, and I was then ready to put the program together. The only thing I needed was a neighborhood. I made a phone call um, to uh, Mabel Butler, who was a county commissioner, and I knew Mabel very well. And I shared with Mabel what had just happened. And I said, I want to start this program. I want you to recommend a neighborhood to me where they need some help. She said, I'll be right over. 
and Mabel drove over and the next thing I knew I was in her car and we were driving to this little neighborhood which she referred to as Tangela Park and she said this neighborhood needs help. Crime is, is, um, is out of control, drugs, prostitution. Uh, kids are not doing well in school, uh, 45, 50% graduation rates from high school and virtually none of them are going on to college. This is where you need to start, Harris. And I said, fine. And so that's, that's how the program evolved. Why one neighborhood? Why a simple program started to provide a college education? Uh, not very complicated uh, because of KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. And, and, and one neighborhood because we weren't prepared to do anything beyond one. One was the prototype, one was the template, one was where we we're going to see if this program really made sense. And so we, we decided that Tangel was the right neighborhood and um, we, would, we would make sure that the program worked effectively and then perhaps we would go on and, and replicate the program. And if we were not going to replicate it, then along the way we would find others who would be anxious, willing and able to do it. We, we, we had a meeting with, with the parents, and then I wanted to meet with the youngsters. Uh, so Bob Allen, who's the principal, who was then the principal of the elementary school, uh, called an assembly. And um, he introduced me and uh, mentioned the program, and everyone was excited. Um, and I, I said, um, um, how, how many of you um, were planning to go to college? Um, and none of them raised their hand. And I said, now... With this program, where college is going to be paid for, how many of you think there's an opportunity for you to go to college? Every single hand went up, and it's been like that ever since. So the youngsters know at a very early age that college is, is not only a possibility, it is a probability. All they have to do is work hard, and if they have an interest in going to college, it's taken care of. If they have an interest in, 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 in uh, vocational training, um, uh, auto mechanic, um, uh, air conditioning expert, electrician, plumber, they have that opportunity also. Uh, the, the Tangelo Park program has been um, incredibly successful. In, fed, uh, in fact, we had a, a professor from University of Chicago, uh, Lance Lochner, uh, do an analysis for us. Lance is an expert at data, uh, educational data, and we invited him here to Orlando and we shared with him the program and provided him with a multitude of, of data. And, and then it took three or four months and he came and gave us a presentation. What I wanted to know was, I know this is gonna sound a little bit silly, but I wanted to know, was a Tangelo Park program a good investment? Was there a return on that investment? Uh, not, not a profit, but was there a, was a return on investment for society? for society as a whole. And, and Lance gave us a, a slide presentation and it was amazing uh, because graduation rates from high school soared from about 40 to uh, 50% to 100%. And we've been graduating close to 100% for the last eight years. Crime in the neighborhood down 65%. Um, graduation rates from, from, from college um, approaching 80%. Um, and, and, and so we, he put all of these uh, statistics together, all of this data together, and he said, Harris, I've never seen anything like this. The return on investment, that is your investment every year, is seven to one. Never have I come across any, anything like this. All of the programs I looked at, maybe one for one, maybe two for one, normally maybe half for every dollar, but any return we thought was really extraordinary. In this particular case, seven to one, unheard of. For every dollar you invested, and we've invested close to $11 million, society gets back seven. $77 million for 11. If you invested a billion, that'd be seven billion back. This is amazing. And I said, well, what, what, what is it? Is it crime alone? The reduction in crime by 65%? is going to give you a tremendous return because every time someone's in prison, it's about $100,000, $150,000 a year. So if you save two or three uh, people from, from going to jail, you're saving a half million bucks and you're investing about a half million every year. So that alone, well, what, what about high school graduation rates at 100% from 50%? Those youngsters who are graduating from high school are going to earn about a half million dollars more 
in their lifetime. Let's multiply that by all of the kids who graduated from high school. That's huge. Uh, what about the kids who graduated from college? A million dollars over a lifetime. So you add the million dollars, you add the half million dollars, you, you, you add the, the reduction in crime, and you're getting to seven to one. Imagine now if this program replicated throughout the United States and the investment was two or three billion dollars, the return would be $14 billion or $21 billion. The, the most incredible return on investment of any public program, even though this is a private sector, it's kind of linked with all of the public uh, initiatives that, that I've seen, something that's really just quite extraordinary. Now, what, what does it do to a neighborhood? Well, you go to Tangelo Park and you see a whole new neighborhood. You can walk at Tangelo Park at two in the morning, three in the morning, at 12 midnight, and, and what, before we started the program, teachers would be instructed to leave as soon as they finished school because it was unsafe. So the neighborhood now is safe. The neighborhood is comfortable. People enjoy living there. And more importantly, they're proud to be there. They know that their only community in, in the United States of America, possibly in the world, that has this kind of a program where every two, three, and four-year-old goes to school for free and where every youngster is accepted to college it gets everything paid for. They are so proud of that. And, and it, it's reflected in how they care for their little community, which really is a beautiful little community. But, but also, there's something that's missing from so many of these underserved communities in America. And that is simple, hope. The kids grow up in these horrible neighborhoods in Chicago and Baltimore, New York and Philadelphia and Detroit. There's no hope. What are they gonna do with their lives? What are they gonna do? Uh, they've got a mom, maybe a dad if they're lucky. Uh, if they get through high school, they're lucky. And then what? And, and so they get into trouble. What else is there to do? And their lives are shortened, which is so pathetic and so sad. The United Negro College Fund says a mind is a terrible thing to waste. We are wasting hundreds and hundreds, maybe millions of minds in America, and we can't afford to do that. So we infuse hope in the neighborhood, pride in the neighborhood, and we offer some very, very substantial um, benefits. Free preschool, free college, free vocational school, free community college. And that changes the whole mindset. And I think we, we can replicate this throughout the United States. There's no doubt in my mind. What has been, I must confess, a, a little disappointing to me, and, and, and maybe it should be, but we started the program 21 years ago. We have met with some really wonderful uh, individuals, um, We've met with uh, chief financial officers, chief operating officers of, of major uh, American companies. Uh, we've, we've met with uh, some really wonderful foundations. And, and we've had people visit us at, at Tangela Park and share our great joy in, in what, what we've accomplished. Uh, and yet, sadly, um, we, we've not been able to replicate the program. We, we, we do not want, we, 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 we don't believe we need the public sector Uncle Sam to raise their hand and say, we'll take over. I'm not so sure that that's the right way to go. Look, uh, th th there are people, and I, I understand their, their philosophy, who say that wealthy individuals um, uh, don't really want to share their wealth. Uh, some of them are a bit greedy. Some of them are a bit selfish. Uh, some of them are so um, involved with, with, their own, uh, with their own work uh, that they really don't have time. Uh, that might be right, but I do believe in my heart of hearts that we can find uh, people in the private sector, uh, people who, who are working for large corporations, who will see what we've done and will say to themselves, we can do that. You, you know what, here's our, here's our headquarters, and right next to it is, is this neighborhood we've looked at for so many years, uh, underserved. What if we took uh, the, the template that that Harris put together and replicated here, would we see the same wonderful changes? What if we're a large department store or, 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 or a large grocery chain? What, what, what if we said before we moved into the neighborhood, uh, we'll adopt uh, the underserved community right near where we want to build a new store? Would they, would they, would, would they with open arms greet us? Would they be happy we're there? As, as opposed to in certain instances, walking around with, with placards saying, uh, stay out of our neighborhood, we don't want you. I mean. That's, that could change America. It, it could change America uh, so 
in, 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 in such a productive way that it just breaks my heart when, when, I, when I see a neighborhood that needs some help and no one is volunteering to create what, what, what we've created and that's our little tangible park program. Uh, so 21 years later, uh, hasn't been replicated, Frozen replicated it with our initiative in the Paramore neighborhood. Um, and, and, and also, I'm someone who does prefer to be intimately involved in whatever I do, whether it's uh, business or philanthropy. And I didn't want to do too much, so we kept this one little neighborhood. Uh, the program had blossomed. Uh, the results have been astonishing. And now we're ready for number two. Uh, tragically, uh, we've spoken to uh, dozens and dozens of uh, potential uh, um, organizations, foundations, individuals who had the ability to replicate the program. And for whatever reason, we have not been successful in encouraging uh, them to replicate it. So we said, we'll do it. Now, Tangelo is a, a small neighborhood, kind of a rural environment. Um, and people have asked us, um, well, th th that's kind of a clearly defined little neighborhood. It, it's, it's not uh, in, in a downtown environment. Uh, it's quiet. Uh, can, you, can, it, can it work in a, in a more urban environment uh, in Chicago, in New York, uh, in Detroit, in, in Philadelphia? And so this is a great opportunity to demonstrate to all of those folks who are, c are curious about this that it can work. And we're going to make sure that it does work there. It's just so wonderful to be able to provide all of these youngsters with these extraordinary opportunities that they heretofore did not have. How does that make me feel? It makes me feel absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And I consider myself to be one of the, one of the most blessed people in America because not only have I been able to achieve what, what I've worked so hard for, but I've been able to share that good fortune with so many others. And I'm gonna continue doing it uh, until I'm no longer here.